Amen. So turn with me, if you will, to the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 14, and we will go to work. What's up, Michael? Y'all bad over there today. Y'all doing y'all thing this morning. I'm telling you. The gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 5. We're going to begin reading at verse 14 through 16. When you have it, say amen. And the word of God reads this way. I'm reading out the NIV translation of the Bible. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they set it on a stand and it gives light to everybody in the house. My God. In the same way, let your light shine before men. Somebody say shine. That they may see, here it is, your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Let me go back over that 16 verse. I want to make sure you hear this. And I'm putting emphasis on my words because I want it to be emphasized in your ears. Verse 16, in the same way, the same way light comes in, I want you to let your light so shine before men that they may see your, underline this, good deeds. Yep. And glorify your father in heaven. And I want to use for a simple subject this morning two words, good deeds. That's it. Good deeds. Father, bless your word today. Make it clear. Make it plain. And we will receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Good deeds. Yeah, you should emphasize that, underline that, highlight those two words, good deeds. It should be noted, first of all, that it's our good deeds, not our good words, that glorifies God. It's our good deeds, our good works. That is what brings glory to God, not our good words, not the eloquent speeches, not the fancy things that we say. A lot of us talk loud, but we ain't doing nothing. Jesus went about doing good. Nothing points to God more clearly than doing good, not talking about it, not fixing to do it, not getting ready to it. I thought about doing something good, but I didn't do it. Just thinking about doing something does not glorify God. Just talking about doing something doesn't glorify God. Fixing to do something, like they say in Texas, I'm fitting to do it. That don't glorify God. Jesus went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. He was always doing good, morally, ethically, and practically. Jesus had a reputation for doing so good that historians who were not even Christians wrote about this man named Jesus who went about doing good. There are other religions who don't even believe that Jesus was the son of God who will still acknowledge that he was a good man and he did Good works. Even those followers, thousands of followers who followed Jesus and weren't really sure sometimes if he actually was the Messiah, they said, oh, yeah, but he does good works. I don't know if he's the Messiah or not, but he makes some good fish sandwiches. <laughs> when we out here on the hill, 5,000 people, and we need to eat, he fed us. I didn't follow him all the way to the cross. I wasn't that radical. I wasn't that sure. But I do have to acknowledge the fact that he has good works. When you do good works, your reputation follows you. Oh, to have the kind of reputation that people know you for doing good works. Because that should be the aim of every Christian. That even if I don't get to preach, and even if I don't get to get up in, in a microphone, and if I don't sing a song, that people will know me by the things that I do. And here's the good part. They'll glorify God. I believe that many times God is diminished in the minds of people simply because of the people of God who are supposed to represent God, who actually misrepresent God, where people say, if your God acts like that, I don't want no parts. 
But we should seek to live in such a way that without saying anything, just by the way I act, the way I behave, the things I do, the way I approach business, the way I approach my family, the way I approach my job, the way I approach the community, that something about the things I do glorifies God. Now listen, 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 I stress this, I stress this, because last night, something interesting happened. Last night, we, we had planned a movie night, and we invited all y'all to come, you know, bring your kids out and all that. There weren't many people there, and so, you know, we invited everybody to come out. We wanted it to be a community thing. It was our opportunity to connect with this community, right? And so, right in the middle of the movie, the clouds opened up, <laughs> and it started pouring down raining, Right? It was, it was lightning and thunder and all that. We had to shut down the movie early, shutting down everything. Everybody went home early. We didn't have it as the way we wanted to have it because all this rain came and it was worried about the equipment. We had to shut everything down. Okay, So right in the midst of us shutting down everything, there was, there was this woman there, this, this homeless woman, this woman in distress who was here last night. And, and when she came, she let the, the deacons know that she was in need, and they immediately jumped into action and started making phone calls, and started making arrangements, and started calling around, and started accessing other individuals who could help to minister to this woman's needs. So by the end of the night, we were able to jump in there. Those deacons jumped into action. While they were still pulling down equipment, they were surrounding her, making sure they had what she needed, making the phone calls. Deacon Green was doing all these things and jumped into action. And as I drove away, I thought to myself, Lord, maybe, maybe, that's what this was about. That maybe this movie wasn't about popcorn and a hot dog. That maybe you just orchestrated this one event so we could reach one soul. And if, yes, and if we had to have volunteers and spent money and spent time and all we did was minister to this one person, it was worth it. And I thought to myself, that's the kind of church that we want to be. We want to be known for doing good deeds. I thought to myself, Lord, maybe you orchestrate this whole event. We, even, we were thinking about the movie and thinking about the popcorn and the fellowship. But maybe, Lord, you orchestrate this whole thing because you knew that she was going to be there. Normally, we wouldn't be here on a Saturday evening. We planned the event on a Saturday evening and normally wouldn't be here. But look how God orchestrated a whole event, shut down the whole event with the rain. And the only person standing there was this one woman who had a need. And we jumped into action. That's what you want to be known for. You want to be known to be somebody who will jump into action, who will do good deeds, who will go out of your way and be known not for what you sing, not for what you say, but for what we do. I emphasize that. I emphasize that because, listen, uh, I learned a long time ago uh, not to pay attention to what people say. I watch what they do because people can say anything. Your actions tell you everything you need to know about people. I found that out. That comment, they can say all kind of stuff. But their actions often reveal, write this down, core values, and true motives. Let that sink in your spirit. That their actions, not what they said, not what they spoke out their mouth, but the things that they actually did are the things that reveal core values and true intentions. What am I saying? Your actions will be remembered far longer than your words will be. Mm -hmm. Words can be easily misunderstood and miscommunicated. That's why texts and emails are so frustrating. Because there may be understanding, it's not always the best way to communicate text and email. Sometimes you got to pick up the phone and let somebody hear, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, or go meet them and let them hear and feel. Communication is not just what you put on paper, it's what's felt, right, when you communicate with somebody. There may be misunderstanding between what is said and what is heard. Things can be lost in translation. I mean, people know what I'm talking about. And if you're not in the habit of, get this, asking clarifying questions... When people speak to you or say something to you, sometimes you have to ask clarifying questions. Those are the questions that you ask to get more information because I may have misunderstood what you were trying to say. So you may say things like, can you repeat that? 
Or what did you mean by that? When you said X, Y, Z, what did you mean by that? I heard you say blah, 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 but, but can, you, can you unpack that a little more? So in the absence of the ability to ask people clarifying questions, it can quickly create an unnecessary tension between you and the person you're communicating with simply because you didn't understand what I said. Sometimes I did say what I say, but you misunderstood what I was trying to say. So if you misunderstand, you got to ask, what, what, what did you mean? Explain exactly what you're saying. Sometimes, sometimes, look at this, sometimes even with clarifying questions, communication can be difficult. It is possible to be saying the same thing, even using the same words, and it means something totally different. How many people know what I'm talking about? Okay. That we could be saying the exact same words, the exact same thing, but when I said it, it meant something different than when you said it. The story is told to me of a husband and wife who were standing in their closet getting ready to enjoy a night out, and both of them were standing in the closet saying, I have nothing to wear. <laughs> closet full of clothes. They were both standing there for 15 minutes staring at it saying, I have nothing to wear. Here's the problem. When she said, I have nothing to wear, what she was saying is, I have nothing new to wear. Come on, ladies. But when he said, I have nothing to wear, he was saying, I have nothing clean. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Saying the same thing, but it could be very confusing. Even Jesus, Michael, who is the great communicator, who is the greatest communicator who ever lived, often found it challenging, even with his closest disciples, to help them understand what he was saying. So you would see Jesus over and over saying something and then having to explain to his disciples what he just said. Because even, it's not because I might say, well, if you was a better communicator, people could listen to you. Jesus was the best communicator in the world. And he was still misunderstood. That there were sometimes things that he would say very clearly, very succinctly, and then have to go back and clarify what he just said. For example, there's this whole discourse between Jesus and Peter where Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Peter, do you love me? This whole discourse going back and forth, this confusion, because the Greek word for love, Jesus was saying agape. And Peter was saying phileo. As we read it, it just says love. So there's just this confusion that even though you're using the same word, we may not be meaning the same thing. Jesus was asking him, do you agape me? Do you have godly love for me? Do you have godly respect for me? And Peter was saying, I love you like my homie. You my dog. You my boy. It's fellowship. It's friendship. And so he kept going back and forth with him because, listen, just because we're saying the same thing doesn't mean that we mean the same thing. So why am I stressing this? Because one thing that cannot be confused, I can confuse your words, I can get confused about what you said, I can be confused about what you meant, but the one thing that cannot be confused or understood is your actions. I might misread what you said, but I won't misread what you did. That even in my own life, I find that I, I typically, when I meet people, I may not remember exactly what you said to me, I may not remember the sentence structure that you used. I may not remember what kind of shirt you had on after we leave church today. But one thing I will never forget is how I felt when I was around you. How many people know what I'm talking about? That people may forget what you said, but they won't forget how you made them feel. And so communication, not just your words, is what's communicated with your actions. Jesus argued in one place. He said, listen, even if you don't believe the words coming out of my mouth, at least pay attention to the miracles. Pay attention to what I'm doing. Oftentimes, they try to discredit Jesus. So if you're somebody that people are discrediting you, you're in good company. Jesus was doing good all over the place. And he still had somebody out there saying, well, you know he's a devil. One man, they walked up on him that just got healed and said, well, you know the man just healed you as a devil. Why are you bragging about this man? He's a devil. He came from a devil. His mama's a devil. <laughs> he ain't no good. You know people like that? You don't even know them, but other people are discouraging what you think about them. And because they don't like them, never mind, forget it. <laughs> you know he's a devil, right? But I like his response, Rita, because he said, I don't know. I don't know if he's a devil or not. All I know is that I was blind. Now, I don't know.
know. I don't know where he came from. I don't know where he went to school at. I don't know his mama and them. I don't know nothing about his grades he made in school. All I know is that when I had a need, when I was blind, now I see. It wasn't about what Jesus said. He don't even remember what Jesus said, but he do remember that Jesus opened his eyes. That's the kind of ministry that you want. You want people to remember what you did. It's not what you say. It's what you do that matters. Can I go deeper? So in our text, Jesus is going to explain to his disciples, and I'm trying to explain to all of you sitting here today, that God wants you to have a certain kind of influence. This is the kind of influence that God wants you and I to have in the world. Where you are known for what you do. You talk too much. Talk with your actions. Talk with your words. Talk with what you do. And he was trying to explain to his disciples, this is the kind of influence I want you to have. I want you to have the same kind of influence that light has when it comes on in a room. If you're in a dark room and you turn on the light, it affects everything in the room. If you walk into a dark closet and you click on the light, it affects everything in the room. I want you to have the kind of influence that when you walk in, you start changing things. That something happens when you walk in the room. So he says, you are, get this, the light of the world. That's definitive, Brother Johnny. It's not that you are becoming the light of the world. It's not that you might be light of the world. It's not that you're growing into becoming the light of the world. Most people think when they think about influence, they think about a stage. They think about a pulpit. They think about an internet following. How many followers you got? How many likes you got on Instagram? I'm an IG influencer. That's what we think about. But Jesus was saying, listen, you're not growing into this. Your presence is definitely, definitively, you are the light of the world. Let me back up just a little bit, because here's what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying this, follow me here. Jesus is the true light. We all understand that. He is the light of the world. Don't get it twisted. He he is the light. He is the one. Even John the Baptist said, when people were following him out there in the wilderness, he said, look, I'm not the light. I just came to testify about the light. Some of y'all get it twisted. You're so busy trying to get God's glory that he doesn't get any glory. That if we do ministry, if we preach, if we sing, if we play, that everything we do should be pointing people to Jesus. If the only thing that people get when they hear you speak or sing or preach or serve or whatever they do, if the only thing they walk away is you, you have not done your job. There is something about being around you that should make me want to follow him. Y'all want to sleep on me here? Can, can I go deeper? There's something about encountering you. You use your gift, your talent. You bless us with it. But when we get through worshiping and preaching and singing, I heard you, but I'm going to follow him. So you are the light. He, he's the one. He's the one who is the light. I am just a reflector of that light. Much like the moon reflects the light of the sun. You do know that, right? That the moon does not have light of its own, but it just reflects the light of the sun. If you were somebody that didn't know that, you would be impressed with the moon. Oh, the moon is so wonderful. But the only reason that the moon is seen at all is because the light is shining. The moon borrows the light from the sun. So it is with you and I. You have no light of your own. It's not about you. This is what we got to tell people, Angela. They didn't come here to see you, Otis. They came to see him. (laughs) We get it twisted. We think people come to hear you preach. No, I didn't come to hear you preach. I came to hear Jesus preach through you. I didn't come to hear you sing. I came to hear the Holy Spirit sing through you. I didn't come to hear you play. I didn't come to hear you do anything. I came to see the God that you serve work through your gift and bless me. Look at somebody. It's about God up in here. Please, I want to make that clear. It's not about a stage or a name or anybody being exalted or lifted. It's all about short pointing you to Jesus. They don't come to see you. They came to see Jesus. 
Some of us are, are glory stealers. My people, my crowd, my audience, my fans. They're not your fans. They came to see him. Oh, your light is borrowed. It's not about you. It's about him. It's not us that people need to see, but it's Jesus. The Bible said, no, no man after the flesh. Maybe that's the problem with us now. We're too busy trying to get people turned on to us rather than be turned on to him. Let me be the first to testify as your pastor. I am nobody to know. <laughs> I am nobody that you want to be impressed with. If there's anything good about me, trust me, it's him and not me. Can anybody else testify? If you see anything good or great or wonderful or grand, if you're blessed or impressed by anything I have, please believe it's him and not me. Somebody give God praise if you know. Look. John first, John chapter, chapter one says this, in him, Jesus, was life, and the life was the light of men. But check it out, and the light shined in darkness, shine. The light, the light that Jesus had shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. That means that it could not withstand it, it could not resist it, it couldn't hold it back. That when the light hit the room, it just took over. That when Jesus walked in the room, his presence was so powerful and so pervasive and so disrupted that it affected everything that it touched. That's the kind of light that Jesus said, I want you to have. Because I'm the light of the world. One person says that they that sat in darkness suddenly saw a great light. That those who sat in the darkness of sin under the bondage of the enemy, when light walked in the room, boom, suddenly they saw a great light. That there's no way that you could have a dark room and light enters and you not feel it. God says in the same way, you are the light of the world. Gone are the days that you can complain about the people on your job. Shut up and be light. Gone are the days that you can complain about the politics in your city. Be quiet and be light. Gone are the days when you can talk about them and they. It's us and we, we are the light of the world. And just like light walks into a room and affects everything in the room, God says, I want you to be the kind of person who walks in and affects everything. I should feel your presence in your house. I should feel God's presence on you, on your job. I should feel his presence in your community. This church will be felt in this community because it's not about us. Let your light so shine. I'm almost there. Let your light so shine before men. The Greek translation of that phrase, let your light shine, suggests it is not a suggestion. It is a commandment. That he's not giving you an option. That he's not like, be a light switch. You can be on or off when you get ready to. You can turn it on. You can turn it off when you get ready to. It's a commandment. Let your light so shine. I'm commanding you. It's not like digging for, do you feel like being light today? You want to be light today? You want to be light today? You don't feel like, okay, that's cool. Be light tomorrow. As a believer, whether you like it or not, whether you agree with it or not, whether you know it or not, the moment you become a believer, you became a reflector of God's glory. You are the light. Whether you choose to accept this mission or not, is up to you, but you are the light. And as such, he says, I command you to shine. I command you to shine on that job. You don't get to lay down your religion at church and then go to work and be somebody else. I command you to shine. I planted you in that neighborhood. I didn't give you that big fancy house. So you can brag about having a nice house. I put you on that corner so you can shine. Oh my God, can I go deeper? I put you in that city so that you could shine. Nobody lights a candle and then puts it under a bushel. What point is that? Nobody turns on a lamp and then put it in a closet. I put you in that position for the specific purpose of shine. Look at somebody say shine. I command you to shine. 
I command you to come out the corner. Come out the closet. Come out of hiding. Stop by trying to be an undercover Christian. I don't want nobody to know I'm a Christian. I don't want to be disruptive. The very fact that you are light means that you're going to be disruptive by good principle. <laughs> When I got here, I, clear, I planned to be disruptive. That's my middle name. Derek disrupted his face. I came to mess it up. <laughs> Why would you have all this glory and all this power and then try to put it under a bucket? God put all this power down on you, all this influence on you, all this anointing on you. He died for you to have this anointing and you want to hide it? How dare you? I command you to shine. Look at somebody say shine. shine. It's a throwback to me of what happened in the book of Genesis when God said, let there be light. Let your light so shine. Let there be light. And it was. In the original translation, it doesn't even say let there be. It just says light. Be. And it was. There was no lead up. There was no phrase leading up to let there be. He just said light and be. And it was. That the moment he spoke up, let me say it like this. God didn't do anything before he turned the lights on. <laughs> yeah, can I talk a little bit? Follow me here. You got to put the thing caps on. God didn't do anything with the world. He didn't change one river. He didn't make one mountain. He didn't make one man. He didn't make one animal until he turned on light. That everything you see after that is a byproduct of, first of all, creating light. Let there be. Let there be, let your light, let there be, let your light, let there be, let your light. When he's telling you to command your light to do it, he's doing the same thing that the earth did. When God stood out there and said, let there be, boom, there was. things begin to happen. Yeah. So now he's saying the same thing about you. Let there be light. Let your light so shine that your father will be glorified in heaven. Can I go deeper? Listen, I thought this was very interesting. When God speaks, his word alone contains everything necessary to fulfill his will. That when God wants to do something, he just speaks it. And everything that needs to happen comes out of that one word. Notice this, that God created light before he created the sun. When God said, let there be light, he didn't say sun come into being. He said, let there be light. Before there was a sun, before there was a natural light, there was a spiritual light. Emphasizing the fact that God is saying it's more important that you have a spiritual light before you have a natural light. Oh my God. Oh my God. Somebody over here, they sleepy. Let me talk to you. God said it's more important to me that you have the light of my presence before you have a light of a stage. You want the light of the stage. I want to be up front. God said, I want you to reflect me. The light's coming on for somebody. There was a light before there was a light. Let me prove it to you. In the book of Revelation, the Bible said, they don't, in, 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 in the book of Revelation, where they talk about heaven or the temple, they said there was no need of the sun or the moon. <laughs> because the lamb was the light thereof. God said, I don't need no artificial lights. You don't need no artificial light. All you need is me. You keep thinking you need me and something else. But in reality, all you need is me to be effective, to have impact, to make a difference. All you need is me. Y'all ain't believe in this. You think it's me and your degree, or me and your favor, or me and the people you know, and me and the hookup. God said, I don't need none of that. I stand all by myself. I'll stand up in the room and shine a light that'll make the whole thing at the light up. Y'all don't hear me up in here. Yeah. Yeah. No man lights a candle and conceals it. No man lights a candle and put it back in the closet. I put it up here for a reason. So let's talk about how your light benefits others. Because my suspicion is that many of us, many of us are lit up, but we're not really 
working in why God lit you up. You think God lit you up so you could dance on Sunday morning. You did, didn't you? You thought that he lit you up so we can have a good old hot praise service. You thought he lit you up so you could have a stage for yourself. It ain't about yourself, it's about him. So write this down. Number one, light, light reveals. I gave you this light because I want to reveal some things. Light doesn't necessarily create. It just makes me see what's already there. Light reveals what's in the room. For example, these speakers right here. I can, I can successfully navigate around these speakers in the room because there's light in the room. If you shut the lights off, I might stumble over something or fall over something. I couldn't navigate my way around because I can't see. When I turn the lights on, I can see chairs. I can see these speakers. I can see this podium. The light didn't create the podium. It just revealed what was already here. So what God is saying is, when I turn my light on in your life, I'm going to reveal you things that are already there. And because I can see better, I can do better. That some people, your life is a mess because you can't see. If you could see, you could move around. I don't need you to move this podium. If you turn the light on, I can navigate my way around it. And God said, for some of the things that you're getting into right now, if you let me turn the light on, you wouldn't be in some of the, ch in some of the things you're in right now. Oh, see, you always make me go there. If you had let me turn the light on that joker, you wouldn't have married him in the first place. If you had let me turn the light on, I would have told you what job to take. I would have told you what city to go into. I would have told you that that girl didn't mean you no good. But you didn't let me turn the light on. Oh. When I turn the light on, it's not that things suddenly appear, Michael. All this equipment was already here. It's just the light let me show what it is. When I see what it is, I can make good decisions. It's hard to make good decisions in the dark. Yeah, it's hard to make good. If I know better, I can do better. You can't make good decisions in the dark. You need information. That's why I'm big on getting data, getting facts. Most of the time, if I make bad decisions, it's because I got bad information. I am a stickler. Give me the information. Because sometimes if I don't have the information, if I don't have the data, I can't make accurate decisions. You think I'm stupid. It's just I didn't get good information. Come on, talk to me. If you had dug a little bit further and got information, you would have known he was an axe murderer. <laughs> <laughs> you would have known, would you? Okay, I'm leaving it alone. But you don't dig, you don't ask questions, you don't ask clarifying questions, you don't seek more information, you take everything on face value, and you can't make good decisions without light. Oh my God. I was thinking about this, Mark. In the book of Revelations, the Bible says that to one church, he says, if you don't repent, I will take your lamp out of your house. That lamp signifies revelation. God is saying, if you're going to be hard-headed and be stubborn and won't listen to me, I'm going to take your lamp, revelation, out of your house. Once I take revelation out of your house, ain't no telling what you're going to get into. God, I was telling the men this when I met with them. I said, Lord, my prayer is don't let me be a fool. Don't let me be. I know sometimes I do foolish stuff. But don't let me just be a fool. I may be some dumb, but I don't be plumb dumb. Anybody else know what I'm saying? I may make some mistakes, but I don't want to be no fool. The Bible said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally. God said, if you ask me, I'll put a light on it. Are y'all asleep yet? God said, if you let me talk to you, I'll tell you who to talk to, Michael. You ain't got to spend years running around, playing games, kissing up the people. If you, tell me, if you let me shine a light, I'll tell you who to talk to, when to talk to them, what to say when you get there. But God help you if God take the light out of your house. I can't raise these kids without God. I can't hold this marriage together without God. That there are certain things that you won't know unless you let the Holy Spirit talk to you. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. He'll tell you what not to say. I'll shine a light on it for you because the light reveals. There's stuff that you're stumbling over right now and God said, I want to give you wisdom. Somebody said, Lord, give me wisdom. Don't, don't let me be a fool. Wisdom is 
the principal thing. And it doesn't just mean you got wisdom because you got a degree. And it doesn't mean you have wisdom because somebody like you. I like you. That don't mean you're a wise person. You're a nice person. But that don't mean you're a wise person. God said, I'll give you wisdom. I can tell you don't have wisdom because you make decisions without information. Yeah. When I see you consistently making decisions and you don't have all the facts, you're a nice person. You're just not a wise person. And God said, the judgment that I'll send against people when they continue to rebel against me and be angry with me is I'm going to pull wisdom out the house. You'll know when a church is declining when God stops giving revelation. You'll know when a business is on the decline when they stop getting creative ideas. The moment you stop having creativity, the moment you stop paying attention to data, the moment you stop having meetings, I encourage people around this church, continue to have meetings. Have meetings often. Have them frequently. Because there's always something being updated. There's always something changes. You can't have a meeting on January and then have a meeting again in, 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 in November and think you're going to keep up. Because information is always changing. And God said, I will reveal. Somebody said, Lord, reveal it to me. Yeah, reveal it to me. Number two, light dispels. It not only reveals, it dispels. Look at this. Light discourages nefarious behavior. It's not that people won't do dark things, but they're less likely when there's light everywhere. We've been putting lights up around the building, all over the building. Have y'all noticed? We've been putting lights on. You probably don't come out here at night, but we got all the lights on all around the building, all around the building, all over the front, all in the back, all in the parking lot. You know why? We want to discourage nefarious behavior. You follow what I'm saying? That when people do nefarious things, wicked things, they tend to do it in the dark, in the shadows. They do it where people don't see. They do it where people don't pay, can't pay attention, right? They do it where people they don't think of paying attention to what they're saying, all right? But this is what I know about people. People are less likely to do things where there is transparency and there's accountability. I'm saying something. I'm saying something. Y'all just ain't listening, but I'm saying something. I said people are less likely to do things where there is transparency and there's accountability where honesty and truthfulness are expected if you work in an environment in a church or work at a job where they're always hiding information you better be careful the bible said this it says that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds there's that word again their deeds were evil the enemy thrives in secrecy. He thrives under the cloak of darkness where you can't see him. If you ever want to know who's with you and who's not, ask God to put a light on them. If you're dating somebody and you're not sure he's the one, ask God to put a light on him. Let me see what they don't want me to see. Oh, thank you. I got one witness that, that God will keep showing you stuff. And you say, that ain't true. He'll keep showing you. He'll keep showing you. It won't just be a red flag. It'll be a great big light shine right on him saying, look at this. Do you want this for your life? Do you want him to put his hands on you? Do you want him to continue to lie to you? Do you want her to be a cheater? I'm showing you right now what it is. Oh, my God, you got to pay attention to what people do. Forget what you said. I saw you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, I feel like running right now. God said you're making decisions about people, and I'm showing you. I'm show Now, you can ignore it if you want to, but I'm showing you. If you want to know who's down for you, watch what they do. Forget all that. I got you, dog. I got your back. I'm with you. I'm rolling. We down like four flat tires. Don't pay that no mind. See if they show up. See if they show up. See if they, oh my God. Shine a light on you. Put a light on it. You don't have to necessarily run people off. Just put a light on it. You ain't got to run here and tell I'm, I'm cutting people off. I'm cutting people off. You ain't got to do that. Just let God put a light on them. Uh, if there's anything I need to know, Lord, let me see it. And sometimes it's hard to see. 
Sometimes it's hard to see. Sometimes when I ask, and I hate to ask God that question, because inevitably, whenever I ask God to show me somebody for real, I see it. Anybody ever done that? Have you ever asked God to show you, you get ready to sign an important contract, and the Lord speaks to you and say, look at this right here. They snuck that in the contract. You didn't see that. You were so excited about the house, you didn't pay attention to APR. You're so happy to get the car, that's how they get you at the car lot. They get, come on and sit in this car. <laughs> see the leather seats? See the air conditioner? See, oh my God, wouldn't you look nice driving this car? Because they're trying to hide some stuff you don't want to see. So they get you impressed with the outward. So you don't pay attention to what's on the inward. And some of you right now, God is saying, I'm trying to show you people. My first prayer is, God, show me what it is. My second prayer is, God, tell me what to do about it. Sometimes God just wants me to see, just for FYI, I just want you to see what it is. Don't do nothing yet. I just want you to see it. But sometimes God wants you to see something because he wants you to do something. And so when I pray for wisdom, God, show it to me. And then God, give me wisdom as to know what to do about it. How should I approach this? What should I say? How should I handle it? Should I move? Should I not move? Should I release them? Should I keep them? Should I invite them in closer? Should I push them away? God, give me wisdom to know what to do. Because light dispels darkness. When light comes, oh my God. I'm not, listen, I'm not talking about dispelling darkness. I'm not talking about people who are like introverted. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about people who are very private people. But you have to watch people who insist on doing things in the dark. You insist on it. You like it because we can't see you. Yeah, you stay out of meetings intentionally. You stay away from folks intentionally. I'm not talking about you're introverted. I get that. I'm not talking about you're a very, very private person. I get that. Everybody just don't hang with role, role people like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who insist on hiding things when there's no reason to. Because people don't hide things when they have nothing to hide. Oh, I'm saying a whole lot today. <laughs> Y'all ain't get it. People don't hide things, Catherine, when there's nothing to hide. Yeah, and so what light does, it dispels darkness. Yeah, it, it dispels. It, it makes it, nefarious people run away from it. People that's trying to do you harm, when the light comes on, they start getting away from you. You ain't got to drive them away. You just start living the light. Just start living a life as a Christian in front of them, and you'll start seeing your circle of friends start shrinking because everybody that's with you is not always for you. Oh my God, why are y'all looking uncomfortable? Everybody that's down with, everybody that's skin to you ain't kin to you. <laughs> Ooh, last thing, last thing, because y'all choking on that. I'm going to let y'all chew on that. Let that sizzle in your spirit a little bit. Because even while I'm speaking, God is revealing somebody to somebody right now. He's showing you. He's showing you. He's revealing it. And the reason God said I put the light on it is because I want the light to make them run. Stop chasing people that God has pushed away from you. God has dispelled them, dispersed them, distracted them, removed them. And there you go trying to get them to come back. Can you be my friend? When you come back, if God let a man die, then leave him alone. Did you hear what I said? If God kill a man, leave him alone. Because God knows things that you don't know. God knows things that you don't know. He knows true intentions. He knows true motives. He knows what's really going on behind that beautiful smile that they're giving you. And he knows what's really happening. And you have to trust God above your own emotions. I trust God above my emotion. I trust God above my accountant. I trust God above my pastor. I trust God above my girlfriend. How many folks trust God? Walk in the light. Light drives away. Number three, light attracts. Light does not struggle to be noticed when it's introduced into a dark place. Did you catch that? Light never struggles to be noticed. Some of y'all doing too much. Y'all trying to be seen. 
Just be yourself. And you'll draw the right people into your life. You're doing too much. You bending and twisted and changing, trying to keep friends, trying to have influence. You're trying to be this person over here and this person over there and that person at work. And you're doing too much. Just be yourself. And it will attract the right people. Oh, my God. Are you that lonely and desperate that you're willing to let a Judas sit at your table? When you know they got a knife at your throat? <laughs> Is this too deep for somebody on a Sunday morning? <laughs> listen, listen, listen. The same light that frightens away dangerous animals is the same light that gives comfort and warmth to campers. You ever see them out in the woods? They're out of fire in the woods, a little wood fire. I'm feeling comforted by the fire. I'm warmed by the fire. But the same fire that warms and comforts me is the same fire that keeps away dangerous animals. If you're wondering why certain people just can't get with you, they're a dangerous animal. If you're wondering why certain people just can't get down, connect with you, it's because they're dangerous to your destiny. You can't take everybody. <laughs> Everybody can't go. Everybody can't rock with you. Everybody can't get in your car. Everybody can't have your phone number. Everybody can't come to your house. Everybody can't roll with you. And if you're too immature to know that, God said, I'm trying to grow you up. I'm teaching. If you ain't saying nothing, I'm still teaching. God said, I'm trying to show you the same light that repels the darkness. The same light that repels dangerous animals gives comfort to those who have good intentions. To the pure, all things are pure. Hear what I say? Think about this. I'm, I'm almost done. The Shekinah glory cloud that led Israel out of Egypt was a cloud that God gave them. It was a physical manifestation of the glory of God. It was a cloud that covered them by day. And it led them through the wilderness. They didn't know where they were going. They left Egypt. They left bondage. And they were on their way to the promised land. And God gave them a glory cloud. During the day, it was a cloud. At night, the Bible says, it was a pillar of fire. And the pillar of fire comforted Israel. God is with me. Even in a dark place, God is with me. Even though I can't see no further than this way. God is with me. I don't need to see the whole wilderness. I just see God's glory. And God is with me. And it comforted them to know that God was with them. But from the perspective of their enemies, Carmen, it kept them away. It frightened them. That's why certain people are uncomfortable with you. Because they see the glory of God on you. Whenever the glory falls on people, have you ever noticed that the more anointed you become, the less people want to be bothered with you? If you wonder why you got so many enemies now, it's because they were always there. You just didn't reveal it to you. You was always walking in the jungle. There was always lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. You just didn't know it. <laughs> but I started walking in the room and I started walking in light and I started walking in truth. And suddenly my phone got quiet. Suddenly my friend list start go down. Suddenly I'm not invited to too many parties. Suddenly nobody wants to have me over dinner, not because I did anything, but because I'm walking. I'm walking in light. I ain't got to do nothing. It's just the glory of God. How many know the glory of God is on you right now? To the wrong person, you ain't never going to be good enough. To the wrong person, you ain't never going to be smart enough. To the wrong person, you ain't never going to preach well enough. But to the right person, you're going to be just what the doctor ordered. Somebody give God praise. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just what the doctor ordered. I walked onto this job to be a blessing. And God's going to attract to me the right people at the right time who are going to give me what I need to help me get where I got to go. If you hear what God is saying, give God a praise right here. Good deeds. Keep doing right. Keep doing the right thing. Keep walking in life. Keep living right. Keep acting right. Don't compromise your Christianity. Don't lower your standard. God is going to attract into your life the right people. 
Oh my God. God said, I moved, I made some empty spaces in your life for the right people to come. Don't get discouraged because you see so many empty seats. Don't get worried because you don't see the people you used to see there. God said, I moved them out the way to make room for what I was getting ready to do. Somebody give God praise for what God is getting ready to do. God, walk in the light. Be the light. Be who you are. Stop being a phony. Stop trying to fit in. You were made to stand out. You were made to do good deeds. Give God a praise. The glory is here. The glory is here. The glory is here. The glory is here. The glory. When the glory walks in, hateful folk got to leave. When the glory comes in, mean-spirited people got to go. When the glory comes in, we're all the real worshipers who got the glory of God on you. Leave up on your feet and say, give him glory. God's going to attract the right people, like-minded people, people that think like you do. People that catch your vision. People that get you. Find about three people and tap them and say, God's sending me help. God's sending me help. He's sending me help in this family. He's sending me help in this church. He's sending help to my job. Here come the replacements. Here come my help. I feel my help. Is it you? 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 Are we supposed to be connected? Grab somebody by the hand and tell them we're supposed to be connected. Like-minded people. Like-minded people. I gotta get around some like-minded people. Some people that love God and don't mind worshiping and don't mind serving and don't mind oh let your light shine this little light of mine and i'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it shine you might not like me, but I'm going to let it shine. You not not get with me, but I'm going to let it shine. You don't want me to get up, but I'm going to let it shine. Shine. The glory of the Lord. All my life filled people, give God a praise right here. Lift your hands up and give him glory right here. Identify yourself. If you are a light giver, if you are a light liver, open your mouth and lift your hands and say, ah! That's why my praise is radical. That's why my preaching is radical. Because my living is radical. That's why you can't get with me. Because my life is too radical. I'm light. This big light of mine. Oh God, oh God. Oh God, oh God. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The Lord just spoke this to me. Because somebody in here, your life seems to be in a dark place. When you look at your money, it looks dark. When you look at the state of your marriage, it looks dark. When you look at your kids, it looks dark. And when you're in the dark, it feels like God has forsaken you, that he left you. But I come to help somebody today and let you know that even when you don't see the sun, the clouds may be overcast and you may not be able to see the sun, but just because you don't see it, don't mean it ain't shining. I come to tell somebody. I come to tell somebody that God said to tell you, Brother Johnny, even if you don't feel me, even if you can't see me, I'm always there. I 
can do all things through Christ. He's here. He's always there. I don't care who don't come to church. Jesus is here. I don't care who turned their back on me. Jesus is here. I don't care who fired me. Jesus is here. I don't. He's always there. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm just beyond that cloud. I'm just beyond that struggle. I'm just beyond that issue. I'm just beyond that challenge. I'm just beyond that craziness. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Do this for me. Walk over and slap three people by the hand and tell them he's here. He's here. Find somebody. The Lord. I'm at your disposal. The light never went out. I'm still your God. I'm still your master. I'm still your deliverer. I'm still Your hands right here. Stand on your feet. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Stand up. I'm done. Stand up on your feet right here. There's a glory down in you. There's a light down in you. God said, I put enough down in you to chase every devil and chase every demon. I just want you to lay hands on your own self and release that glory. Come on. Open your mouth and release the glory. Open your mouth and release the glory of God locked down in you. You have this treasure in earthen vessel. Let that out. Let that out. Let that out. glory out Angela let that glory out let that glory out Carmen let that glory out let that glory out JT let that glory out all the way in the back let the glory out listen this is what I want you to do lift your hands all over the building Just lift your hands right here lift your hands right here there's a glory down in somebody that God said, I want to release it. You've been trying to hide that thing under a bushel. You've been hiding in secrecy. You've been hiding back in the shadows. But I'm calling you out of the shadows right now. There's too much glory on you to hide back in the shadow. You got to disconnect from some folk. You got to get away from some folk. You got to unfriend some folk. You got to hang up the phone on some folk. But there's a glory on you right now. And God said, if you lift your hands and open your mouth, I'll let that glory come out of your belly right here. Come on, all over this building, open your mouth. You can't do this with your mouth closed. You got to open your mouth and let that glory out of your, out of your mouth, out of your belly, out of your glory, 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 glory. Come on, praisers, take over the room, take over the room, take over the room, take over the room. Cast out darkness! Cast out darkness! Glory, glory, glory. Come on, that's my war cry! Glory! Glory! glory. Woo. Somebody do this for me! What? Glory. I feel the glory. glory! I feel the glory! glory. glory. Woo. glory. 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 glory.
get what? Glory. Tell them to them again, what? Glory. I don't think they heard this. Get up there and tell them. Glory. Tell somebody way in the back. Glory. Tell somebody in the corner, glory. glory. Clap your hands up. Yeah! 
you. It's on you. It's on you. The glory is. The glory is. The glory is. I see you, sis. I see you, sis. I see you, sis. Get your breakthrough. Get your breakthrough. I see you, Leah. Get your breakthrough. Get your. The glory of the Lord upon everything you put your hands on, everything you touch, it's God's glory on you. It's not even human wisdom. It's the glory of the Lord. Shine! 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 Lift your hands and give God glory right here. Lift your hands and give God glory right here. If you sense the glory of the Lord falling on your situation right now, if you feel the light of God shining through your situation right now, it's breaking through darkness, it's breaking through confusion, it's breaking through worry, it's breaking through poverty, it's breaking through negative thinking, it's breaking through failure, it's breaking through sin. That sin's too small to hold you. Those lies are too small to hold you. God. All right, stand to your feet over the building. We're going to go. I'm going to dismiss. I'm going to dismiss. I'm going to try to dismiss anyway. If you're here and you need church membership, you see how we are. You see how we act. You see we don't care about praising God. You know we don't care about getting a breakthrough. You know we're serious about this. If you don't believe what we're saying, at least pay attention to what you're witnessing. The glory of the Lord is here. Ain't no big eyes and little U's over here. It's all about Jesus. He's the only star in this house. And if you want to be a part of a church that is insistent on making Jesus great, creating my life, creating my home, creating my job, I want to extend to you an invitation to become a part of the Impact Church. If you come to my left, I got deacons that are prepared to receive you. Well, pastor, the first time I ever came here, I don't even know. You got to check what's happening in your spirit. You got to check what's happening in your heart. It's not by accident that you're here to hear this message. God wants you to be known for having good deeds. Good deeds. I'm putting down my title so I can do good deeds. I'm laying aside my position so I can do good deeds. I'm laying aside what people think about me, what they don't think about me, because I'm more focused on doing good deeds. We want to be doers of the word, not just here. That's you. Come to my left. Come to my left.